Sometimes, one has got to become monstrous in order to survive. Art and psychoanalysis give shape and meaning to life, and that is why we adore them. But life as it is lived has no shape and meaning, and that is what I am experiencing just now. Coming events do cast shadows. Ordinary consciousness simply becomes pain. Magic besieges the religious life and men yearn to speak the language of angels. You can't go through the looking glass without cutting yourself. Emotions really exist at the bottom of the personality or at the top. In the middle, they are acted. This is why all the world is a stage. Give yourself to these great works of art. They suffice for a lifetime. I think women, perhaps unconsciously, convey to female children a deep sense of their own discontent. Nothing will bring me peace except revenge. Sex comes to most of us with a twist. There can scarcely be anything worse than surviving something which shatters your mind and leaves you obsessed with revenge. And suffering we know breeds images. It breeds the most beautiful images of all. The sending of a letter constitutes a magic grasp upon the future. But people have their own troubles and tend to forget. One is not all that interesting. Even Hitler is being forgotten at last. Artists are indeed unlikely to be good. Goodness would silence them. Could one think so intensely of someone and not be visited? Literature must always represent a battle between real people and images. Sometimes, one feels suddenly doomed by fate. Anyway, People never fall in love suddenly like that, except in novels. The bereaved cannot communicate with the unbereaved. Girls don't want men to be quiet and gentle, I'm told. If you're not panting with impatient lust, they think you're not interested. Some people are just diminishers and spoilers for others. I suppose almost everybody diminishes someone. A saint would be nobody's spoiler. This talk of love means very little. Love is not a feeling. It can be tested. Love is action. It is silence. It is not the emotional straining and scheming for possession that you used to think it was. How hardening to the heart it must be to do this thing, to change an innocent, soaring being into a bundle of struggling rags and pain. And this great love makes you both ruthless. You can't kiss me and vanish. God lives and works in history. The outward mythology changes. The inward truth remains the same. No good would come of all these fine intentions. It's terrible that one doesn't love people forever. The virtues have secret names. They are so difficult of access, secret things. Everything that is worthy is secret. Better keep such things decently buried. 
Art must invent new beauty, not play with what has already been made. Religion must invent God and never rest. In the world without a Redeemer, only clarity was the answer to guilt. He would make it all clear to himself, shirking nothing, and then he would decide. I need love. I've never felt more in need of it than now. I feel so terribly, terribly unhappy. Writing is like getting married. One should never commit oneself until one is amazed at one's luck. We are clay, and nothing is real for us except the uncanny womb of being into which we shall return. Happiness, what's that? I don't know. How can one be happy when one loves a demon? All dreams are sinister. That art gives charm to terrible things is perhaps its glory, perhaps its curse. Art is a doom. Goodness is giving up power and acting upon the world negatively. The good are unimaginable. Mercifully, one forgets one's love affairs as one forgets one's dreams. The true rose, the miracle of nature, owed nothing to the hand of man. On this planet, many things are the rule which are thoroughly evil and pernicious. The calmness was the final tone of this pair. Maybe there are times when one should welcome defeat, tell it to come right in and sit down. The substance of my life is a private conversation with myself which to turn into a dialogue would be equivalent to self-destruction. One forgot, one forgot. What hold had one on the past? The present moment was a little traveling in darkness. Even what we are most certain of we know only in an illusory form. How sad for those who cannot enjoy what are after all prime pleasures of daily life, and perhaps for some the only ones, eating and drinking. The room, the wall, trembled with precision, as if the inanimate world were about to utter a word. Only stories and magic really endure. You can't magic yourself out of the situation. You've got to live it as decently and as grimly as you can. Perhaps one could not live with such knowledge. One might die for it or off it.